on building the X-Set, time to put the pistons and rods in the block. So basically I have my crankshaft installed, uh, assembly lube on that, ready to go. Now the next step is um, taking my assembled pistons and placing them into the cylinder bores then going underneath and uh, hooking up the connecting rods and caps. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I need to take my pistons and you always want to protect these uh, rod bolts as well as you want to protect the edges here so that they do not mar up the piston wall when inserting it into the uh, into the motor. Now you'll see the F on all of these pistons that stands for front that means that this particular piston will be going in um, this direction into the block. So one thing I need to do first is oil with, um, I'm actually using Amsoil break-in oil, uh, 30 weight for my initial startup, so I'm going to coat the sides of these pistons with that oil, as well as the inside of the cylinder walls, and the inside of my ring compressor will be coated as well with the oil. This will just help uh, lube up the walls and everything for the assembly, as well as give some initial um, lubrication for the first startup. So uh, also before I insert the piston into the cylinder, I am going to be um, double checking all my ring gaps. Basically how that works is on your oil scraper here, bottom ring 30 degrees offset here, the top ring 30 degrees offset from this point offset to here. And then the other side of the piston, the front, the side facing the front of the engine, the wiper ring 30 degrees offset of here, and the top compression ring 30 degrees offset of here as well. So basically all these points on the end of the uh, machining for the valves, you will have a piston, or excuse me, a ring end um, on those offsets. So every ring is completely offset around the entire piston. So let's get to it. So now getting to the pistons um, install part. So first off, I have a towel here soaked in my motor oil, and I am going to basically lubricate heavily the entire outside of the piston here with the towel to get some a good amount of oil on the outside of the piston and around the rings. Okay, now um, next thing I'm going to do, I have already oiled it once, as you can see in this side of the ring compressor here, there's a good amount of oil in there, that just helps the rings not stick and seat into the, uh, into the bore a little better. And so I'll need to release this. Okay, cylinder walls have already been oiled down. Now, the next step would be cleaning off this part. And let me see if I don't know if you're in front of the camera here or not. Next part will be cleaning off the bearing surface here. I have a towel soaked with lacquer thinner here for the cleaning and then also taking my rod bearing wiping it down thoroughly as well with the lacquer cleaner you can see there is still quite a bit of debris and dirt on those uh, on those bearings even though they've been cleaned several times and just quick blow off compressed air. And then I'm going to insert the uh, rod bearing into the rod here, dry. That's what it should look like. You always want that tang in the slot. And then make sure your bearings, one side's not sticking out, that they're both flushed with the machined end of the rod here. Then we will apply some assembly lube. And I am doing this 
this part without gloves mainly because there's a lot of sharp edges um, that I'm working around and uh, the gloves will keep tearing if I if I use them I don't want to get a, a piece of rubber glove stuck in between the rings or somewhere in the cylinder that I can't access okay so now I got my two pieces of tubing I will insert these find the loose end here over the ends of the bolts and now this piston is ready just about ready for insertion into the cylinder next step and this is a tricky one to show on camera this dot here on top indicates the front of the piston so when you have your ring compressor on you can no longer see the front of the piston so this will be your indicator for that now to space my ring end gaps properly the top compression ring should be over here wiper ring this is the looser one should be over here and then the oil scraper rings the top ring is lined up it should be about there the bottom ring is here it should line up around there so now this is ready for the spring compressor now when you put the spring compressor on you want to make sure to leave some of the pistons sticking out the bottom um, you don't want to have the spring compressor completely below because you'll not be sure that this piston edge is able to fit in the cylinder bore correctly. This is kind of a guide the bottom flange on the piston here to help you uh, help you get it inserted correctly into the bore. So this is the fun part, cranking this thing down without spinning the, the rings. And make sure as this type of a spring compressor will curl on you to get that, keeping it nice and flat. Torque it down as much as you can. All right, that's all she's got. So now this piston is ready for, completely ready for insertion into the cylinder. My cylinder bores here, this particular cylinder, uh, two and three here, are the crankshaft is at the, I guess, bottom dead center, that would be for the crankshaft. So the uh, journal for the rod is, on the crank, is at the lowest possible setting it can be. Um, when you're doing this, once again, check that that dot is going toward the front of your engine. You will carefully insert the rod into the cylinder, being careful not to score the walls. And then I reach underneath with one hand, and I am grabbing a piece of tubing. Okay. sure to center that up good I'm gonna give it one final crank here just to make sure and yes it is completely sealed now you get underneath here and check something now I will slowly make sure this is completely seated On the, on the head surface and centered. You don't want this to lift off the head gasket because that gives a chance for one of your rings to pop out. If that ring pops out, immediately stop because if you force it any farther, you're gonna crack the ring and then you're in for a new set of rings. So basically I'm gonna take the bottom of this plastic hammer and just tap slowly. Check everything's good here, looks good. There we go. Now, I'm going to just feel around here and give a couple more taps into the cylinder. Now it's time to rotate the block over and connect the connecting rod and cap to the crankshaft. The bottom side of the engine here and um, just going to kind of take my light here on my cell phone and double check a couple things. Everything looks good. As you can see, these, these hoses are here and ready to be removed. 
Everything looks nice and clean and good down in there. I didn't hear any any rings pop so or crack, so that is good. Now the next step is removing these hoses from the threaded ends on the rod. And then gently lay it, the rod, over and against the side of the chamber there while you set the hoses down. Next step here is uh, getting the rod cap ready. You can already have these done, which is probably a smarter idea than what I am doing, but um, just for demonstration purposes, basically taking this rod cap here, wiping off the bearing surface, make sure it's clear debris. And then of course blow off. Put some compressed air. And then the other side of that is taking the bearing and getting this all cleaned up and ready for installation into the cap. Okay, and then give that a quick blow with some air. Get all the lint off of the get all the lint off of the bearing. And then basically, same way you always do it, tang inserted. And then snap the bearing in until it feels nice and tight and secured. Make sure it fits properly in that bearing surface. As you can see, this is my one rod bearing that had a fair amount of scoring in it, but you can't even feel it with your fingernail. My machinist looked at it and said, you know, you can do new bearings, but he goes, these were clearanced so well and they were still tight. He goes, you know, you're not looking to put a lot of miles on this motor before you uh, do a real rebuild. And he, his suggestion was just, just live with them. They're, they should be good to go for quite a while. So um, that's what I'm going to stick with here. And then um, I need to, before applying, I will put some assembly lube. And this Permatex Ultra Slick Assembly Lube, uh, it's the only assembly lube I've ever used, but I've well, actually, I take that back. I've, I've used assembly lubes before, but um, it's a very interesting um, consistency. I would say, and here I'm going to be putting some assembly lube on the crank journal. I um, It's very slick, but extremely sticky at the same time. And... Um, it's kind of weird because it will be so sticky that you can't get it to, um, it wants to just keep sticking to your fingers, to everything, but yet when you go to, when you're done assembling, it will literally just start dripping all over the motor. So it's kind of an odd, odd consistency to the product. So the other thing I'm making sure too is I'm making sure to get, uh, some assembly lube on these machine surfaces on the side of the crank as there is play in the rods back and forth. And that is one thing also, once you have the rod installed, you will need to take your feeler gauge and make sure that you have the correct end play in the rod there between the crankshaft and the rod. So, okay, so that is all lubed up. I'm just gonna blow my hands off with some air real quick. And now for doing the cap there is just like everything on the engine there is a direction of the cap you can see the little dash mark here that will coincide with a dash mark on the side of the rod so i'm going to get my fingers down in here and i am going to gently push up on the top of the piston slowly and carefully you do not want to bump the crankshaft, or have the, have the rod bolts bump into the crankshaft. Okay, get it lined up here. Okay, it's fully inserted now. Now I will find this little hash mark here, and I see a similar hash mark on this side of the of the bearing. So now I'm going to insert this rod cap like so. Make sure it gently touches and then grab your mallet and tap it until it locks to the rod. 
Now, the last step of the install here is your cap bolts. And I, I didn't see any, I might have missed it, I didn't see any information in the factory service manual in regards to a um, progressive torque of these. I just saw a 35 to 37 foot pounds measurement, but um, I am choosing to uh, do a progressive torque down. I've been doing uh, 30 or 20 foot pounds of torque for an initial. Get that here. There we go. And then I've been stepping up to the 37 mark for the second torque. So now we'll go up to 30, over to 7, and now will final torque them to 37 foot-pounds. There we go. Okay. So that is all installed. So now in my factory service manual, it claims the end play, which is basically between the crankshaft here and the rod cap, should be a minimum of four thousandths up to eleven thousandths, or roughly that. Be sure to check your manual, don't listen to what I say, because it's <laughs> not necessarily right, but that is how I've seen. So starting at four thousandths, I'm going to check my clearance here, and I have four thousandths of clearance. So I'll step up to eight thousandths, that will not fit in. That's, uh, there's three thousandths, here's five thousandths. Five thousandths will fit, barely. Six thousandths is snug, so it looks like seven thousandths is the winner. Yep, seven thousandths will not fit in. So I'm about six and a half thousandths or so on my, uh, on my uh, end play there. So that is well within spec according to the factory service manual. So anyway, so now I got, I already had one in before just because I uh, haven't done it on this motor before and I wanted to make sure it's doing the piston correctly there. So I got two done now. Now time to do the final two. And then uh, that's it for installing the pistons. Okay, so <clears throat> last thing I want to do now that all the pistons and rods are installed and connected to the crank is put the crank pulley bolt back on and basically just um, take a breaker bar real quick and just check the rotation of the engine a few times just to make sure everything is spinning freely and nicely. So everything feels real good there. Nice smooth motion. No hiccups or drags. So rotating assembly is, uh, <clears throat> is now complete. So next time uh, I'm going to be doing a video basically on installing the oil pump, oil pan, and uh, windage tray. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, please feel free to leave some comments down below for me. Thanks for watching.